Something is walking up on me. <laughs> what? Um, what, 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 what is this? Oh, I got a spring buck. See, and I have no E to spot or anything. All I can know is there's something orange in the grass ahead of me that is staring at a pink thing with a bow wondering what the hell and doesn't seem to care. Hello. Um. And I missed, wait, what? Oh, oh no, I just realized what I did. That's the wrong, okay, never mind. Alrighty, hello and welcome to the channel. And for today's video, we're going to be going over the update to the Call of the Wild HUD switch mod. And so that I don't screw up any of the technicals and misphrase my English, I have brought along Bogfish, the developer of the mod. Say hi, Bogfish. Hi, Bogfish. Close enough. <laughs> All right, so first things first. It, this is going to be a redo of the last video simply because the last video I had not spoken to Bogfish yet and I guessed at most of the things. So to try and get information accurate, he's here. So first things first, what is the HUD switch mod? Uh, it's a mod I developed using some, some pretty basic tools that are available to make the game more immersive, to hide HUD elements that are omnipresent, they're always there, uh, and you don't have the ability to manipulate them within the UI. Uh, I tried to make it so you could manipulate them while in-game, while playing, controller or keyboard. Uh, and you could switch it on the fly. So for instance, I play on keyboard and mouse. And if we look right down here, we got ourselves a, a wildebeest. There's some kudu. We got this wonderful blinking green nonsense up here. And then of course, if I hit it, I get a nice big box of information that treats me as if I am an expert hunter. And even though I'm at 200 yards away, I can somehow tell roughly that things wait. And in all realities, I actually don't have that capability. I am not that knowledgeable. So I'm going to hit C, which is the default toggle for the HUD switch. And now when I look, it's just the animal. Well, the, it's behind a bush now, but there is an animal there, I promise you. And any identification, any specification about the animal, I have to figure out myself with my own eyes. And on top of that, I have a much cleaner image. I'm not being distracted by blinking things on the screen. Uh, I can't see any of that. I, I have it engaged, so uh, I can see there's a fairly big kudu in the mix of the four kudu down there. Uh, one slightly larger than the rest. You could maybe guesstimate that that wildebeest is a, kind of a good size, but I don't have uh, anything telling me exactly what it's gonna be. Uh, so here we have some tracks, and if you look very carefully, you can actually make out the actual footprints, depressions in the grass. Now, if you had everything turned on, you just walk over them, hit the button, and it will tell you what it is, how much it weighed, how long ago it happened, all kinds of stuff like that. But since I don't have that, I kind of have to eyeball the thing here and kind of figure it out. Uh, and to be honest, I don't hunt Savannah enough, so I'm not sure but if i had to guess i'm gonna say that's wildebeest and so now because this is an instructional i'm gonna actually flip the hud back on and it is that's his his hooves are as big as your feet uh so there's also the track toggle feature and i do i have that enabled on this one no i do not uh so the track toggle feature allows you to have tracks turned on through the game menu and then you can hit n and that will basically toggle off what it's there's specific tracks it toggles off which ones are those glow only uh, at this time uh, it does unfortunately toggle off the entire track uh, it's a limitation of the mod but yes it's, it's glow that it does affect right so if you, uh, so out of your track effects so if i go to my menu so under track effects we have right now i have them completely off but there's particle and glow particle is of course the little uh kind of ring that goes off over the top here and then their glow is when the physical track itself glows uh but that is tied to the track as well so if you use track toggle it's going to disable the little footy prints that you see as well. The grass will still fold down, but the footprints will go. There's a stampede coming. Hopefully not this way. So you only use the track toggle version if you're going to fully commit to playing with that toggling of the glow tracks play style. Because it, like I said, it is kind of a just kill all tracking. Right, but and then if you don't use track toggle, but you leave the track effects off, you can still track the animal just by, you know, your eyeballs going, hey, there's a track going that way. And then actually right now, if you listen, I'm pretty sure they're over there because I hear a stampede. <laughs> if I turn glow to no track effects, you can toggle the actual, it will toggle the actual footprints and blood pools. 
which can still be useful if you're doing, say, cinematic work and you're more interested in this as an environment for, what would you call it, walk in the woods experience. But for hunting purposes, I personally just like to turn all the tracks, the track effects off. That way I can still get these and then run without track toggle. If you have real difficulty finding an animal, you can re-enable glow or particle in the UI menu and then find an animal uh, so you don't have to search for an extended time. It's totally up to you how you want to handle tracking. So the, the, the track toggle really does nothing that the game, you can't already do in the game. It just adds it to a hot switch. It's the HUD switch mod that does, or the main HUD switch, that does the extra bit of removing the tool tips and the spotting and tracking information in the top right corner. Yeah, I could have left that all tied together as, as one in the mod, but I figured people would want to have individual control over how they handle their tracks. Seeing as there's three different options built into the game, Already. Summary of the first two sections. What? It's a it's a HUD switch. Uh. We suffer from the same disease. Yes, I believe I just had what is commonly referred to in the medical industry as word vomit. Uh, I thought it was a vowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the important thing to cover right here, if you are currently or in the near future plan on being a content creator that either is or will be part of EW's content creator group, there's some things you need to know about the mod and the versions that are available for it. Now, I would like to preface this by saying I have not spoken to any EW representatives directly and any information I have about their positioning on mods of the game is purely based off hearsay. But to my knowledge, and again, based off hearsay, they have a zero tolerance policy on any mods that operate on quote unquote stolen code or manipulate game code at all. In which case it is very important for you to pay attention to the different versions because they function in different ways. So here on screen, what you see is the HUD switch call the wild page on Nexus mods. I will leave a link to it in the description below, as well as the description of any videos that I use it in. Here you will find the instructions written by Bogvish himself that include everything from how to install it, how to use it, and some, and again, English word for... Tips, gameplay tips, play style tips, recommendations. There we go. <laughs> we have the basic version, the aim toggle version, and the ultimate edition. Now, if you are a content creator, the basic version operates like version 7.0 and older, where it is a shader manipulator. It does not operate on, nor does it manipulate game code. It messes with how DirectX compiles the shaders that the game spits out, basically blocking the ones with the HUD elements that you do not wish to see. That's the reason for some of the issues like the save icon that still blinks, the if I stand on a track while sighting my bow, the animal icon will pop up in the top right, things like that, because there are limitations as to what you can manipulate without messing with game code. However, Bogfish has gone beyond that to fix those issues, but with the requirements of needing to put files and manipulate files in the game. We have the ultimate version, which I feel is the most immersive of the three. Uh, it's the one I personally use. Uh, it does turn off the Hunter Mate completely when enabled. You cannot toggle the aim, uh, range finder uh, on and off or the HUD on and off while you're in glassing or using binoculars. It has a small file which blocks the blinker of the autosave. So that's not interrupting your view uh, and blinking in your left hand bottom corner. It also has the ability to completely hide in case you like to use uh, an active skill or perk. That version can hide the small icon which appears if you use the Hunter HUD. When he, uh, so I have, I run with my HUD off. So right now, let me go ahead and throw my HUD back on. So you'll see it in the bottom right corner. And if I bring, if I go ahead and disable my HUD, it goes away. But if I bring my binos up, you will see the kind of background for my special, which is the startle call. So that's the bit he's referring to. Uh, if I stand on this track here, even though I'm not getting the E to spot, remember it's only manipulating visuals. So the functionality of the game is still there. I can still click the button to spot. And then if I bring my binos up, you'll see the wildebeest icon in the top right corner. Uh, this also happens when I'm sighting my bow since the same interact key is used for setting the smart sight. A limitation of the basic version since it does not manipulate uh, the game files, your ultimate version does fix those issues because it's able to manipulate the image files that store those icons. Only the image files, not only what you see, not how the game functions with autosave at all. 
uh, that still works perfectly normal and has not been touched. It's just the, the image of the blinker has been made transparent. Uh, icon is the same situation. That only the outside border of the icon, which remains, that, that's stuck on screen, I was able to make that transparent. It also includes a gamepad um, key map modification, which allows you to turn on and off the headlamp without engaging the menu that normally would appear uh, when hitting the uh, start button. So the start button now only turns the headlamp on and off on the ultimate and aim toggle version. And that's kind of a nice surprise too. I was able to put together an aim toggle version, uh, which works with either hold or toggle, but it does allow toggling of aim. I know a lot of people like that play style. Um, but it is a little less immersive. It does have a couple other icons that may pop up in a UI menu, like when you're uh, opening up a menu for uh, the shop or something of that nature. But it works almost as well, if not as well, and it allows toggling while you're glassing or scoping. That's a big difference with the, that version. Uh, also includes a, the same two files to take out the blinker and the active perk, and also includes the file to remap the headlamp so that it doesn't turn the uh, headlamp on when you hit the start key. And that is only for controller users. You can take that out if you're a keyboard user and dispose of that keyboard file uh, or key map file. If you're a keyboard user, you don't have to include that. That's for uh, control users only. The other, the, the ultimate and aim toggle versions are built off of the core version. They only have a couple of additions. They're not entirely different, new, changed. They're based and built off of the exact same core of the basic version. It just adds the other uh, save blinker killer and adds the, uh, removes the active perk icon. When I say that these are manipulating game files, they are still not changing game code. They are not messing with the script. The, the messing of the, the files is a replacement of the files that would hold the image to a transparent version. So it still does not mess with the functionality of the game when it comes to the actual hunting process. Yeah, yeah, nothing. There's no differences there. It's just a transparent outline uh, instead of a solid line outline, uh, say for instance on the active perk or the blinking icon itself. Uh, it's simply uh, a transparent, it's simply been cleared instead of having that uh, white uh, picture. And again, my main reason for wanting to clarify that is for content creators, and that is under the assumption that the hearsay of EW's policy is correct. Now, if the policy is not correct or they have a different policy, you know, any and anyone actually knows this, feel free to comment down below. I would love to know what the actual policy is. I am just making the assumptions for this video that they have a zero messing with game code policy. But since the basic version operates no more advanced than a reshader, you know, what people will use. And matter of fact, you can even get a reshade profile done by Bogfish with this mod. To me, it seems perfectly safe because it's not actually giving you any advantage at all when it comes to hunting. All right, so to give an example, so right now I have the mod disabled and I'll bring my map up and I'll take my mouse over here to the left. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hide the HUD, which with the menu up, what you get left with is the blur effect. But again, it's only hiding what you see. The function is still there. So if I take my mouse where those icons should be and you listen, the icons, they're still there. You just can't see them. You could even click on them. Yeah, and that would probably be a heck of a challenge to see if you can navigate the menu. <laughs> Don't do it accidentally. If you wonder why all of a sudden something has changed, go in and see if you might have actually changed it during one of these hudless moments. All right, so you come here to Nexus Mods. You do need an account to download mods from this website. And personal uh, PSA here, traditional or typical internet safety guidelines is Anytime you're on a site that maybe, I wouldn't necessarily say Nexus Mods is questionable, but if you've never been here, you might want to create a junk email. Myself personally, I have an email that is not attached to anything important. And so I created an account with that email. That way, if the information's ever stolen, hijacked, sold, whatever, the only thing they're going to get uh, is information on how to access other questionable sites I've been on. I personally have not experienced any problems with Nexus Mods, but again, that's that's really a general thing. You should use that all the time. You should always have a separate account for your important stuff. Banks, uh, Google, things like that. You should never use the same account for everything because, you know, then you have one safety breach and everything's up for grabs. I was just, I've been on Nexus for years and never had a problem, but I, use the, I do the same protocol. 
Yeah, it's better safe than sorry. You never, you never know what's coming around the corner with uh, technology. Now there are other mods available, and I want to make it very clear that the HUD switch mod is the only one that I will stand by or support at this point in time. And let's face it, y'all have free will. You're gonna try what you want to try. But a word of caution: some of the other mods available on this site will manipulate game files. You could break things. They may break things, they may not break things. They could be considered cheaty. They can mess with population files. But again, you have free will, do as you must or as you will. All right, so once you've gotten that and you got your account, you'll go over here where it says download. You can click manual. So you got your free and your premium, slow download. It's 15 megs, not a big problem. All righty, so once you've downloaded the zip file with the mod you'll get a zip file much like this and you need a program to unzip it now uh, if you're a pc user that's as easy as going down to the uh ye old windows store and then you can just you know usually type zip in and then they'll come up with a bunch of stuff so here i just grabbed breeze zip it was the first free extractor on the windows store so we're going to open it with breeze zip no i'm not going to pay for anything go away uh, and then we're just going to select the file folder here that we want and hit extract once we do that, it'll produce just a normal file here. And this is where, uh, and I, I went on about this in the last video, and I have to say, I love this setup. I really do. Your options, as far as what variant of the mod you want and what features it has for your particular use case is easy to determine just by following the file hierarchy. And I, and I love that we don't have to go in and mess with files. We don't have to change settings. It's just, you just, yes or no questions, really. So first one here is which version do you want? So right here, as discussed earlier, is the aim toggle version, the basic version, so no drop zone required, and the ultimate edition, as well as the optional reshade profile for the uh, reshade tool if you want to have a little color correction. So for me personally, content creator, and again, based off hearsay, I chose the basic version. I do not use tracking toggle because I run with tracks off normally. So I'm gonna select no tracking toggle. And then it gives me one last little file here. I'm gonna open that. And then we end up with these four files here. Well, three files in a folder. Now, the next step is you need to get to your game files. If you do not know where those are, it's actually quite easy to find. If you're on Steam, you go to your Steam library, you go to the Hunter Call of the Wild, right click, properties, local files, and then you can click browse local files. And then that'll show you all these files here. And then it is easy as select everything from the mod, copy, paste. It does not replace any files in the game, this basic version. And so that's the only only thing you have to do. Now with the ones that replace, you're probably gonna have to give permission to replace existing files, I'm assuming? No. It doesn't ask that? Not at all. Uh, you have to create the Steam launch command and then just deposit the drop zone folder. It's done. There are included in the text uh, telling you which uh, launch command that I personally use. There's a couple of variations out there that seem to work. Uh, the one that works for me on my setup is the one that I included. Uh, and it tells you where to put that in your Steam launch options. And then the, the drop zone folder is included so you can just drop it in place. Right, so, it, and I forgot about that. So when you're going to the ultimate edition, so right here I went ultimate, no tracking toggle, there is an instruction sheet which makes life a lot easier. So once you have your particular version installed, that's it. Now it's just time to launch the game. It's that easy. You use the features you chose and you have the mod installed. And now you can hunt in full realism mode. One caveat, gamepad users do have to remap at this stage the uh, headlamp key. So for those, you'll have to go to your uh, gamepads or no, your key bindings. And then over here you will remap and it's your headlamp key. So that would be this one. So right now it's pushed down right stick. Yep, that gets remapped to start. It's a recommendation. And, it, and that's how ultimate, and aim toggle and ultimate must be remapped to start. There are two options that, that actually work for the basic version uh, controller users. Neither one is optimal. Again, the whole reason for the ultimate version and aim toggle version to exist with that free key map is to disable the start button's ability to open up uh, a menu in addition to turning the flashlight on. So it isolates that to just turn the flashlight on. On the basic edition, you're stuck with opening the menu at the same time. So if you're not using an active skill or perk, which is good because it can't hide those, if you never activate an active skill or perk, uh, you could remap the headlamp to the right bumper. And uh, that works great also. All right, so that is the HUD switch mod, the different versions available and 
kind of why you would want it. Now, if you really want to see it in action, there are plenty of videos already on my channel, but feel free to subscribe and uh, stay tuned because the next video, Bogfish and I here are going to go on a true realistic hunt in game, not a real hunt because he's like a thousand miles away from me. If you have any questions for Bogfish, you can actually contact him through Nexus Mods, correct? Yeah, you can uh, comment on the mod itself, a uh, question or an issue that you might be having. And uh, yeah, that's that's really, yeah. In the near future, I will be making an announcement when the Discord server for this channel will be up, where Bogfish will also be present and have his own channel for discussing things related to the HUD switch mod. If you are hunting with everything off and that is beginning to not hold your interest anymore, I recommend trying out this mod. The extra challenge it brings by not having any of the tool tips, any of the spawning information, tracking information, it really does add a level of difficulty to the hunt. And the devs did go as far as to when they did things like the tracking system, the tracking still works. You can still identify species, where it went. Uh, if you shot it from the blood pools, you can still identify how good your shot was, how quickly the animal's bleeding, just by looking at it. And it, it really does turn this run and gun hunting game, if you're playing in the full everything turned on, into a very adventurous struggle, which for me, I really enjoy that. And you're not forced into any changes. Anything you do can be manipulated on the fly while in play in game. Alrighty, so that is going to do it for this one. So if you have any interest in helping support the channel, there are links in the description down below. Why are you gonna interrupt my outro? We're gonna have to find that thing and kill it later. Alrighty, so that's gonna do it for this one. So if you have any interest in helping support the channel, there are links in the description down below. If you have any interest in contacting Bogfish about the mod, feel free to head on over to Nexus Mods and leave a comment down below the mod, as well as stay tuned for when the Discord server comes up and he will have his own channel there. And don't forget to subscribe because coming up next video will be our realistic hunt where we put the HUD switch mod to work and find out exactly how frustrating it is to get one of these buggers. I'm not actually sure what we're going for, but we'll probably figure that out then. So that being said, there are buttons if you liked it, buttons if you didn't, and as always, buttons to push, until next time.